Uh, grab your Bibles and turn with me to Matthew chapter number six. Matthew chapter number six. I want to I wanna do this. Uh, this is Wednesday night Bible study, and uh, this is where we just really dig in the Word. Say amen right there. Amen. And uh, I want to make sure and remind everybody, let's, let's do everything we can to pay attention and uh, uh, really focus on what God has for us. You know, sometimes up in the balcony, up in the balcony, we think that nobody can see us up there. But that is a misconception. Uh, how many of y'all can see all them folks over there? Wave at him if you can see him. All right, how many, how many of y'all can see all those folks over there? Hey, there we go. We can see everybody. So let's make sure that we're in here paying attention, okay? Uh, there's been just a little bit of uh, goofing off a little bit, and we need to make sure we're here for Bible study. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. So, and by the way, they've got cameras all over this building. They see everything. Amen. <laughs> so, Matthew chapter number six, Matthew chapter number six, and verse number 19. Matthew six, verse 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your what? Your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, the whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness... How great is that darkness? No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon is just wealth, riches, uh, materialistic things. Uh, verse 25, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought, now, that doesn't mean don't think about what you need. It means don't worry about it. Don't be consumed with anxiety. Uh, uh, don't, don't be anxious about it. Take, take no thought for your life. What ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap. Nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore... If God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For all these things do the Gentiles, and the word Gentiles there is not just a non-Jew. He's specifically speaking of unbelievers unbelievers, people who uh, are not following their heavenly father. All right, this is what they seek. This is what they pursue. For your heavenly father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. How many of you are glad God knows what you need? Amen. Amen. That's great. Verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. What things? Everything you've been worrying about. All these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for your blessings. I don't deserve them. And Lord, I haven't done anything to earn them. They are strictly by grace, and I am so thankful for them. Lord, I thank you for everybody that's in this room tonight that's here to study, and they're here to grow, and they're here to learn. And Lord, I thank you for the attention that they pay to your word. Now, Lord, as we pay attention tonight to your word, help us to take it and apply it to our life. 
It doesn't do much good just to let it come into our ears and into our mind, but not put it to use and do what we learn. And Lord, I pray that you'll bless everybody here. I know they're probably wore out and tired, been working all day. And Lord, they, 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 they could have been a hundred other places, but they chose to be in your house. Lord, please don't let them leave disappointed. I pray that they'll take your word and apply it to their life and let them see a big difference in how you lead and guide and, and, and bless them. Lord, I pray for the days upcoming. I pray that you'll meet every need that we have. Help us to practice what we preach. In Jesus' name, don't let me say anything I shouldn't. And Lord, please don't let me forget anything I should. In Jesus' name, we all pray. And all God's people say it. Amen. Amen. All right, you may be seated. You may be seated. I, I, full transparency, I really wanted to continue, and I'm going to continue uh, kind of with the theme uh, in dealing with uh, what we got to see in Dubai and, and see those 30 different nations and the leaders from those nations and how they were responding and how they were uh, behaving, how they were uh, worshiping and, and thinking, man, we need that in America. We need that in our church. We need that in our communities. We need that with where we are at in the church today. And you say, preacher, what in the world did they have? They had joy. I'm talking about real joy. This was, this, listen, it wasn't because it wasn't because they got a, a special seat on the airline. It wasn't because they had a better motel room. They had joy because they were forgiven. And they were appreciative of what God's done for them. They come from countries where it was a great danger for them to even show up. We couldn't even take pictures. We couldn't even take pictures because they were afraid they would post them on social media and it would risk their life. So here we have people who are risking their life to learn how to share the gospel in a more effective way, and they are filled with joy, joy, happiness. There was passion. There was passion in their, uh, in their worship and in their behavior and in their prayers and in their testimonies and what they were doing. I thought, man, this is, this is, this is so much of what America needs. This is so much of what our communities need. And why is it, why is it that they had that in the capacity that they had and we in America have all that we have except that? Except the joy, except the peace, except the, the, the passion in, in, in what they did. And I, I really wanted to focus on, on, on missions. We, we have our missions emphasis coming up. And I, 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 I was praying and praying and said, God, what do you want me to do this Wednesday? We're kind of in an in-between. You know, usually we'll take a book of the Bible, uh, but we're kind of in a break right now. And so what, what do you want me to teach on? I couldn't shake. I couldn't shake uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, uh, you know, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And, 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 and okay, okay, Lord, okay, okay. I, so I go back and I start reading the chapter. And I was going to go all the way to verse number one. But God really wanted me to hone in on verse number and start with verse number 19. Don't just deal with that verse. And we're going to primarily, I mean, that's going to be the focal point, verse number 33. But I want you to see what he says in verse 19. And we're really dealing with two groups of people, the poor and the rich. Did y'all catch that? That means all of you. Those with money and those without money. Those with possessions and those without possessions. Are y'all with me? Now, here's the thing. What, what most people without possessions don't realize is they're not the only ones that worry. And they're not the only ones. I've heard this said, well, I wish I just had plenty of money so I wouldn't worry no more. Honey, that's not the way it works. Wealthy people worry. They may worry about different things, but they still worry. They still struggle. They still have issues. And Jesus is addressing both groups of people before we get down to verse number 33. So let's look what he says. Let's look what he says. First of all, he says this, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. 
Now, he begins with a sermon, if you will. So the first thing I want you to see, number one, I want you to see the sermon. The sermon first is to the prosperous, to the prosperous, verse 19 through 24. Let's see what he says to them and encourages them and exhorts them. First of all, he says, don't be hoarding stuff. Don't be, uh, don't be guilty of materialism and, and, and gaining things and possessions. Uh, he says, don't do it in a way, don't do it in a way where it is in a selfish manner. He says, don't lay up for, boy, we must have some guilty people in here, amen? You ready? <laughs> lay not up for yourselves. There, there is a focus right there, yourselves. Now, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt nor thieves, uh, uh, where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, the whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee, and I'm going to explain all this, if the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? No man, say that with me. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Now, here's the key. Uh, does that mean God wants everybody to be poor? No. Does that mean God is against us having possessions? No. No. Some of the most righteous men in the Bible were some of the most wealthy men. Abraham was a friend of God, and he was very, very wealthy. We look at Job. Job was the wealthiest man in the East. He was, he was very wealthy, but he was very righteous also. It's not about that. This is what it's about. Ye cannot serve God and... Now, here's the thing. If, if, if you are serving one, you cannot serve the other. This is the point he's trying to make. He's not saying you can't have stuff. He's not saying that it's bad or wicked. I've, <coughs> I've heard people say this, that the, the, uh, uh, the root of all evil is money. And that's not what it says. What does it say? Love. The love of money. The love of money. When you're coveting it, when you're living for it, when you're serving it, that's where it's wrong. He says, be very careful. There is a very big danger when it comes to material wealth and material possession that rich people, the Bible says, fall into a snare. And what is that snare? That they begin to trust their riches. They begin to trust their riches and depend on their riches and not on God. And we need to understand the only thing that we have, the only hope that we have, the only help that we have is God. We should never trust in anything but God. God. Now, why, why is that so? Why is that so? Look what it says. Proverbs 23, 4. Labor not to be rich. Labor not to be rich. In other words, riches should not be your focus. Should we not labor? Absolutely we should labor. God says a man don't work, neither should he eat, right? But the goal of our labor should not be riches. It should not be material things. Cease from thine own wisdom. Now, here's why. Watch this now. Here's why. He gives you the reason. Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? Wilt thou set thine eyes on that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves what? They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. How many of y'all see things fly away at the end of every month? <clears throat> Do I have a witness? Now you know why it's called currency. It is going, amen? Be careful when you depend on that. Be careful when your focus is on wealth and riches because just as quick as you get it, it can be gone. gone. Be careful. Luke 12, 15. And he said unto them, take heed, take heed. Beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. 1 Timothy 6, 9. But they which be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. 
For the love of money is the root of all evil. The love of money, the desire for it, the craving for it, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Man, I can't tell you how many times I have seen, I have seen families coming to church struggling, struggling, having a hard time financially. And, and, and man, they come into church and, 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 and start serving God and start getting involved and being a part. And God starts blessing them financially. And God starts blessing them in that particular way. And they start getting comfortable and they start buying stuff. And they start having money to go here and yonder and everywhere then soon you never see him again. I can't tell you how many times I have seen that. And, and listen, this is no different. This is no different. Help me, guys. Help me. Help me. Y'all going to be in here. Be with me, okay? Listen, the children of Israel did the same thing. They come into the land of promise. They come into the promised land and God blessed them and blessed them and blessed them. And then the Bible says that they forgot. And in their comfort, in their blessing, they begin to follow other gods to the point that God had to send uh, judgment upon them and put them in captivity. And then they would beg and say, oh God, oh God, help us again, help us again. God would forgive them, have mercy on them and bless them again, pour his blessings upon them and they would get comfortable and forget. And guess what? It just happens over and over and over. Man, we've got to be careful. You know, it's easy to stay right with God when you're broke. <clears throat> Do I have a witness? And I, I, and I don't mean this, and, and trust me, there is no, this is nothing. This is no, no uh, you know, criticism of, of, of wealthy people because, man, some of the most uh, giving people, some of the most generous people are wealthy people. I, I have seen them do mission work. I've seen them, so this is not, but I'm telling you, sometimes, sometimes when you're so comfortable, you feel like you don't need God. And that's a dangerous place to get. That's a dangerous place to get. I'm telling you, in ministry, in individual work, I remember, I remember Brother Mickle, he's a, he's a, he, he was here when this was going on, uh, when we were begging God just to keep the lights on. You talking about spiritual, we are spiritual. We had to be. We were begging God, help us to pay the bills. God, help us to keep this thing going. And man, it kept you close to God. And sometimes I've re I've re we really have to be careful as a staff because God has blessed our church so much and, and blessed it with resources, blessed it with people and, and all to the point that you may not pray as hard as you used to. When in the truth be known, you need him more now than we did then. And so be careful. Be careful. He says, be careful of hoarding things. Be careful of focusing on stuff. Be careful of materialism. Be careful of, of putting your trust in the stuff that you have or in your, in your ability to have wealth and resources. Now watch what he says to the poor. Now that's the sermon, right? He says, be careful. Be careful of materialism. Now look what he says to the poor. Look what he says to the poor. Verse 25. Therefore, therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than raiment, or excuse me, more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you... Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit into a stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? You remember, this is, this is anxious, anxious, anxiety, worry. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? O ye of little faith. Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all of these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of these. So 
To the prosperous, he says, be careful of materialism. To the poor, he says, don't worry. Don't worry. Say that with me. Don't worry. Now, I would say, I would say the majority, uh, the majority of folks in here would fall underneath this category. Uh, it, but it's no different, it's no different in being wrong as the first category. Because of this, two things I want to show you. I want to show you this. Uh, I want you to look at the struggle. I want you to look at the struggle. Number two. Number two. The sermon to the wealthy, he says, don't hoard up possessions. Don't hoard up material things. Don't let your, don't let uh, your total focus, everything that you're serving, you're working toward, be stuff. Don't, the simplest way, don't live for stuff. Is everybody with me say amen? amen? And then, and then when he is dealing with the poor, he's saying, don't fret over not having stuff. Don't worry. Don't worry. God is going to take care of you. And I like how he, I like how he references it. Your heavenly father. Jesus is speaking to them and said, listen, he's your heavenly father. There is a relationship that there, he wants you to understand that God is God, but he's not just God, he's your father. Your heavenly father. He knows what you need. Your heavenly father takes care of the birds. Your heavenly father, he makes sure the grass is looking good. He, listen, even though it's temporary, your heavenly father is going to take care of you. Now here's the, here's the problem. Here's the struggle, though. Now, to the prosperous, A, write this down. To the prosperous, here's where there's a problem because there is a lack of focus. There is a lack of focus. Man, when I seen this, I said, I've got to put this in here. This is really not even a message. This is just an extra, all right? In the first, the first uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, Verse, first six verses that we read, 19 through 24. You see, you see verses 19 and 20. Listen, then he has an encouragement in verse 21. And then he gives, he gives you another lesson in 22 and 23. And then you have verse 24. But here's what you have. First of all, you have two motives. First of all, he says, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth. Everybody say it. Lay not for yourselves treasures upon earth. Then he says, verse 20, lay not, or but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. heaven. So you have two motives here. You have two motives. You have a heavenly motive and an earthly motive. All right. Two different places that you can be investing your wealth, investing your time, investing your energy, investing your strength. Does that make sense? Say amen. Your motive, is your motive heavenly or is your motive earthly? So you have two different motives. Now watch this. Look at the next one. Look at the next one. And, and by the way, by the way, when he says for where your treasure is, where, where, where your treasure is, there where your the heart is your thoughts and your feelings. What you think about, what you feel is going to be connected to where your treasure is. Whether it's heaven or whether it's here on earth, you're going to be thinking about it all the time. That's what your feelings are going to be wrapped around and, and connected to. Now watch this. Look at the next one. He says the light of the body, the light of the body is the eye. In other words, the lamp, the lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be, there's a key, if thine eye be single, single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil. So here's what we have. Literally, your eyes, your mind, your mind. If you have a single mind, in other words, unwavering, not, not what does the Bible say about a double-minded man? He's unstable in all his ways. When he's here or there, when your eye can focus, now, what happens if you're, you, you, you have problems with your eyes? Evil means disease, by the way. It, what if your eyes is disease? You see three people. Yeah. One person standing there, but you're, you're, it, it's, it's messed up. 
The point he's trying to make here, the point he's trying to make here is your, you have, first of all, you have two motives. Now he's describing two minds, two mindsets, thinking about this and thinking about that. He says you, anyway, I got to wait one more, one more. Then he says two masters, two masters, right? He said, no man can serve two masters. No man, no man could please this one at the same time of pleasing this one. It's impossible. So you have two motives, two minds, two masters. Are y'all with me? Say amen. amen. Now watch. Do you know the word worry? When you break the word worry down, it comes from the word that means to strangle. It means to pull apart, to pull apart. You see what's happening? You're getting pulled this way, but then you're getting pulled this way. Your, your faith is pulling this way, but your fear is pulling this way. The world is pulling this way, but God is pulling this way. Your spirit is pulling this way, but your flesh is pulling this way. Are y'all with me? Say amen. amen. And there is a struggle. There is a struggle with wanting stuff. And wanting to be spiritual. There's a struggle with focusing on God and in focusing on the world. There is an inward struggle. Can y'all see that? Say amen. amen. And the problem is, the problem is, there is a lack of focus. Say that with me. A lack of focus. The I, he said, single. Single. What does that mean? We need to learn to focus on one thing. One thing. Now, how many of y'all have problems with that? Say amen. Me too. Me too. But that's the problem. I'm, 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 I'm focused on, I'm focused on, uh, you know, what I've seen in Dubai. I'm focused on the churches we're trying to plant in the United States. I'm focused on my grass as high as my hip. I'm focused on my wife and, and, the, and the kids and make sure that and the, and the church and is everybody happy? And, and, and here we go. Yeah. And we're so, whew, and we're being pulled apart. And Jesus said, you got to stay. Come on, everybody. You got to stay. You cannot, you cannot, Focus on gaining material possessions while focusing on serving God at the same time. You can't. Because we're going to love one and hate the other. We're going to be about one. And you're going to see in a minute, you're going to see in a minute that that doesn't mean you can't have stuff. And it doesn't mean you won't get stuff. Because did Jesus not say, if you'll seek first the kingdom of God, all these things shall be added unto you. Are y'all with me? Delight thyself in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of your heart. All right? But we got to stay focused. All right, now watch. Here's the struggle with the poor. The struggle with the prosperous is there's a lack of... The struggle with the poor, there's a lack of faith. There's a lack of faith. Obviously, we can say in verse 30, he said, O ye of little faith. Let me give you two things. Look at verse 27. Verse 27. When you're there, say amen. amen. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? I've always wanted to be six foot tall. I am not. I made it to 5'11". I've worried about it. I've thought about it. I've dreamed about it. Guess what? I ain't. I'm still five. I might be five ten now. I'm going the opposite direction. You say, Richard, what are you saying? That's ridiculous. It's not is any more ridiculous of you worrying about the stuff you're worrying about. That's what Jesus said. How many of you, how, here's, I heard a great story about, about worry. Here's what worry is. It's like a rocking chair. 
It'll give you something to do, but it won't take you nowhere. Right? And, and Jesus is trying to show you the futility of worry. So what good is it doing? All that worry does is rob you of today's joy, worrying about tomorrow's problems. But boy, do we worry. Worry, you know, is the bill's going to be paid. Worry is, is, is everything going to be okay. We worry about everything in the world. And what Jesus is teaching us right here, he's saying, if you're worrying, you're not trusting your heavenly father. You're not trusting your heavenly father. He said, let me give you some evidence. And he begins to tell about the birds. Has God not taken care of the birds? Yep. And then he says this, aren't you better than the birds? Y'all yeah. know Jesus is snickering a little bit when he's teaching this. Yeah. I mean, come on, people. Yeah. Get with it. I know Jesus. Come on. Right. You're better than the birds. Yeah. Look how much he takes care of them. Aren't you better than the birds? Right. Your heavenly father. Your heavenly father, look at this. Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not. They're not out there sweating. They're not out there worrying to death. They're not out there fretting over whether, he said, yet Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one. In other words, God takes very good care of them. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? O ye of little faith. So this is what all the Gentiles seek. Basically what he's saying there, he's saying, listen, this is, this is what all the people who don't have God as their heavenly father worry about. I, nobody, nobody, no father, no father in his right mind ever want, wanted any of his children to worry about whether they're going to have something to eat that day. I never want, ever, ever wanted my kids to worry about whether we had money for the rent or whether we could buy clothes. Listen, that would break my heart. You know, and, and, and listen, God is no different. You're his child. You belong to him. Now, now, you know, when you're growing up poor, that's a little different, but he's rich. Can you imagine how he feels when you don't think he's going to take care of you? Oh, ye of little faith. I had a, I, I programmed in my, my birthday in the, in, in the, uh, on the, on the, one of the, one of the sites that it tell you how many days old you are. And, uh, I don't remember what it was. 17,000. I don't know. It, it was like a big number, uh, and I found, I found out I was born on Thursday, though. That, that's what, so anyway, uh, uh, all those days, and this is why I wanted to do this. Uh, I look back, and for all those thousands of days, God's taken care of me. Yeah. I've had enough to eat. I've had clothes on my back. I've had a roof over my head. Why? Do I think tomorrow he's just going to stop? Hello? This is what he's saying. Look, what, what is, why is Jesus bringing up all this? He's bringing up past evidence. You need to see what God's already done. And if God's done it in the past, he'll do it in the present. And bless God, he'll do it in the future. And all God's people see it. Now, now... That was all intro. Here's the message. Here's the message. Here's the solution. Here's the solution. How, how do we deal? How do we deal with our worry? How, how do we deal with the struggles of stuff in our life? You know, we, we start gaining and, and being blessed by God, and, and we're starting to, to, to have more resources, and, and, and God's blessing us with, with uh, the ability to get stuff. How do, how do we stay focused? How do we stay focused? And how do, how do we when, we, when we are struggling, when things aren't going 
like they need to go. And, 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 and listen, everything, all the bills are not paid and we're, we're, we're having some issues here and it seems like, uh, you know, people are getting sick and we have medical debt now and, 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 and maybe I've lost my job. And, and, and so how, how, do I, how do we balance both? How do, we, how do we balance being what we're supposed to be when God's blessed us with resources? And, and, and what do we do? How do we keep from worrying when, when, when things are a, 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 a struggle in a difficulty? And by the way, by the way, Paul said he's had both. He said, I've learned to abound and I've learned to be a base. He said, I've learned to behave, listen, when I had stuff and I've learned how to be content when I had nothing. And there may be a time that everybody in here is going to go through both of those. But what do we do? How do we stay focused when we have stuff and how do we stay with faith when we don't? And all God's people say it. Here it is, verse 33. Now he said all that to set this up. He said, stay focused. Stay focused. He said, stay full of faith. Believe in your God. Now, now, when you have stuff, you're looking at the stuff. Your focus is on the stuff. When you don't have stuff, you're looking at that. You're looking at the bill that's due. How many of y'all have had more months than money before? Y'all see? And we sit there and we look at it. And the more we focus on it, the more we look at it, the more we what? Think about it. And the more we worry about it. So this is what he said to do. This is what he said to do. Verse number 33. Verse number 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And, and say it with me. And... Say it again. And okay. Now I want to. I want to give you. I want to give you one, two, three, four, five. I want to give you five words, and then we're going to flip the page and talk about seeking the kingdom. Okay. Look at these five words. Look at these five words. First word we find. But verse verse thirty three. But everybody say it loud. But seek. seek. That is pursuit. Write that down. That is pursuit. What does that mean? We have to actively be involved. We have to actively be involved. In other words, we can't sit at home on the couch and say, I'm just waiting for God to take care of me. I'm waiting for God to meet my needs. Oh, really? Okay. Now, he, he promised to take care of our needs. He promised to meet our needs if we would do our part. And what is our part? Actively get involved, and that's what this verse is. It's pursuit. So seek means what? Pursuit. Come on, everybody. Seek means? Pursuit. All right. Write this down. He says, seek ye what? First. First. Everybody say that. Seek ye? First. That is priority. That is priority. All right. So we have pursuit or pursuit, whichever word you want to use. Then we have the word priority. Is God a priority in your life. Now see, he's, he's addressing people. He said the, 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 the Gentiles, the unbelievers, they're pursuing, they're pursuing uh, wealth. They're pursuing clothing. They're pursuing food. They're pursuing the basic needs is what he's saying. So in one, we have stuff, we have uh, materialistic things, and then on the other hand, we have just basic necessities, basic needs, and he said, they're pursuing that. But God says, I don't want you to pursue that. I want you to trust that to me, and I want you to put me first and pursue me. Make God a priority. He's first, period. He's first in our day. He's first in our money. He's first in our time. He's first in our commitment. He's first in everything. If we will put him first, I'm telling you, it'll change the way we worry. It'll change the way we think. If we will put him first, first all right, then see. He said pursue. Then we have the word priority. He said seek ye first the kingdom. That's the word plan or purpose. Write that down. Plan or purpose. Now, did he not say in the prayer, did he not say in the prayer, uh, our Father which art in heaven, it's, it's in the early part of the chapter, our Father which art in heaven, thy kingdom, 
You know what he's saying? I'm praying for your will. That kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. You know what he's saying? I want to happen here on earth what you've already gotten written down in heaven. I want to fulfill your plan for my life. How many of y'all know God's got a plan for your life? God's got a purpose for you. God's got a plan for you. He's gotten written. And by the way, all you young people in here, I'm telling you, if you just understood how great God's plan is, you would surrender to it today. I, I wish people could just, 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 start, just take a minute and step into my life and see how much God has blessed me and, and, and done for me. His, I'm telling you, his plan was better than mine. I told somebody one day, I wouldn't have the gall to take a notebook and write down all the things that God's done for me in my life. I would have never even had the gall to ask him for all that. God's got a plan for your life. God's got a purpose for your life. And listen, the, 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 the definition of success is finding his will and staying in it. All right? Anyway, anyway, I got to get the back page. All right? So the word seek is what? Pursuit, the word first, priority. priority, needs to be important. It needs to be important. Here's the problem with most of the church in America. It is, it is, it is, uh, I ain't no other way to say it. It's just not important. It's a secondary activity. It's not primary. It's not primary. It's if we have time left over. That's where we're at. Listen, your, your kids should never be surprised you're going to church. They should be surprised if you miss church. I mean, you know, I, I've seen people get upset because, you know, say, well, we, we, we've missed church. Well, it, that's not really uncommon. Get mad because we didn't check on them or something because, you know, I said, but now there's some people, if, if they miss, I'm calling them because something bad is going on. Something has happened. But the track record of some just reveals to me it's not that big a deal. Well, God is saying here, if you want help with your worry, you got to make me a big deal. I have to be priority in your life. If that makes sense, say amen. amen. Then D, he said, he said the word righteousness. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his what? Righteousness. That's practice. Write that down. Practice. You can use the word purity too, but I wanted to use the word practice because that's behavior. Righteousness is just right, rightness, living right, doing right, being right, acting right. You know, believe it or not, in the world we live in, there is a right and there is a wrong. He said we are to pursue his plan, pursue his righteousness. Then, then, then I like this one. And all these things shall be added unto you. That's his promise. That's his promise. Now, here's what I want you to do. Okay, now he's dealing, with, he's dealing with people that are struggling with focus. He's dealing with people that are struggling with faith. They're worrying. And so he says to those who are struggling with focus, and he's, he's saying to those who are struggling with faith, he said, here's what I need you to do. I need you to pursue me. I need you to pursue me. I need, I need to be priority number one in your life. Now, it's real spiritual to say, hey, seek the kingdom of God. All right, what does that mean in all practicality? Now, how many of y'all like practical preaching? Just, I mean, what exactly does that mean? I know that sounds real good, but what does it mean in shoe leather? What is it? How can I go do that tomorrow? Amen? That's what I want to share with you. How do we seek the kingdom? And what does seeking the kingdom mean? What does that look like in all practicality? In everyday shoe leather and everyday, I mean, put it in skin and muscle, right? So here's what, flip your page, flip your page. 
And I want you to see this. Three things. And we got 14 minutes. We're good. We're good. We got 14 minutes. What does it mean to seek the kingdom? Now, keep in mind, keep in mind we have the word pursue, right? Pursue. That means to chase. It means to seek. How many of y'all have ever played, uh, uh, played hide and go seek? All right. How many of y'all played that with your car keys? <laughs> And you didn't mean to hide them, amen? And so what are you doing? What are you doing? I mean, some of y'all smart people that's got that little, you know, thing where you hit the button and they start beeping. That's the greatest thing ever, but I, I, I'm not that brilliant, amen? And so, so what are you doing? You're going, you're picking up pillows, you're looking, you're looking, you're looking, you're asking, you're talking. Hey, have y'all seen me? And I love this. Well, where's the last place you had? Don't ask me that. If I'd known that, I wouldn't be. Right? But you're looking, you're looking, you're seeking, you're pursuing. You're not sitting back. Here's what some of y'all are seeking God or, or your key. You're sitting on the couch hoping they just show up. That's not, that's not, no, no, no. He said, seek, go after, pursue, chase with the aim of catching. Amen. Amen. Now watch this. Now watch this. First of all. First of all, seeking his kingdom, seeking the kingdom of God has to do with his commands. Write that down. His commands. It means to pursue the word. His commands. How, how are we going to know what he wants us to do if we don't read what he said to do? You cannot separate God's will from your life with his word. Because God's will for your life is found in his word. So, seeking the kingdom means you're seeking his commands. You're seeking his word. You're studying his word. Look what it says. Joshua 1.8. This is what God told Joshua before they went into the promised land. He said, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate. meditate. That means think about it. Y'all remember the illustration? How many of y'all don't remember the illustration of meditate that I gave a long time ago? Y'all don't remember? About the cow. Yeah, about the cow. There we go. How many of y'all have ever seen a cow? Okay. How many of y'all have ever ate a hamburger? Close enough. Okay. A cow out there in the pasture, a cow out there in the pasture is eating grass. Well, every now and then you'll see him up there. He ain't even put his head down. He's just standing up and he's chewing. He's chewing. What's he doing? He's chewing his cud. Now, what is that? That is previously, previously eaten grass that he stowed away that he brought back up to chew on it some more. That's what the word meditate means. It means that you've read the word, you've read the word, and now you're sitting there thinking about it. You're meditating on it. Now, now, the problem is, is too many of us are speed readers. We say, I got to read three chapters a day. And you, and you, you not even thought about what you read. God's not up in heaven giving you credit on how many verses you get. He wants you to think about it. He wants you to think about it. Meditate on it. It goes to work in you. Look what it says. It says, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. That thou mayest Oh, my goodness. What a novel idea. We read it. Then we meditate on it. Then we, then we do it. Are y'all with me? I, I know. I know. It's a crazy thought. But to all, to all that is written therein, why? Why should I do that, preacher? For then thou shalt make thy way. And then thou shalt have what? How many of y'all know that's enough reason to? Watch this. Blessed, Psalm 1. Blessed, by the way, if you look up that word in your concordance, the word blessed means happy. Happy is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Now watch what happens to that guy. 
He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall. How many of y'all want to prosper? Do you see that there is a direct connection between you being able to prosper and you meditating on his word? 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Look what he tells Timothy. Paul's telling Timothy, till I come, here's what I need you to do. Give attendance to and to exhortation and to doctrine. You know what Paul knew? The word is so important. You need to pursue the word. You need to be a student of the word. And you say, preacher, I'm not even, I, I can't read or I'm not a good reader. You have no excuse in technology today. You can get it on your phone. Just about everybody in here has a smartphone. You can get it on your phone. And they'll read it to you. They'll read it to you. Uh, listen, uh, 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 is it James Earl Jones? That's right, James Earl Jones. Stop, listen, Darth Vader will read it to you, all right? Listen, pursue it, read it, meditate on it, think about it. It, it, it doesn't work. I, 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 have seen, I have seen so many people say, well, I, I, I've got my Bible, I've got my Bible, I'm holding it dear. Open it. <laughs> I told you, my, my senior year in high school, you know, I had my last, my last class of the day was, was marine biology. I had all my credits. I didn't need it. And I, I was foolish. I'm ashamed of it. But I slept every day. And one day I was sitting there and my, my, my marine biology book was closed and I had my head on it and I was going to town. I was have, just sleeping away. Mr. Priest came up to the table and knocked on my desk and said, Mr. Carter? I said, yes, sir. He says, this does not work by osmosis. If you don't know what that means, it's not going to soak up through your skull. you got to actually open the Bible and read it. What does it mean to seek the kingdom? It means you pursue his word. You learn his word. You meditate on it. You read it. You listen to it. You are taught it. You come, make yourself available. And this, I'm preaching to the choir. Y'all here on Wednesday night. Y'all know this part. And listen, there's a reason that God's blessing you guys. Make Pursue the word. Secondly, secondly, seeking the kingdom means you pursue his word or his commands. And secondly, you pursue his character. His character. The Bible says, seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And his righteousness. In other words, you learn the word so you can be like him. That's the whole point. We don't come here so we can you know, just no more stuff. We don't come here because it does something to us on the outside. We come here because it does something to us on the inside. Now look what it, look what it says. Ephesians 4, 1. Therefore, the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that ye walk. Worthy. The word worthy there doesn't mean deserving. The word worthy means appropriately. Appropriately. We are to, there's an appropriate way for a believer to act and behave. That ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. Colossians 1.10. That ye might walk worthy of the, unto all pleasing. In other words, we should be pursuing a life that's pleasing to him. That's what it means to seek the kingdom being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. 1 Thessalonians 2.12, that ye walk, what? Worthy. Worthy of God who hath called you into his kingdom and glory. Watch what he says in Ephesians 4.22, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Wow. That you put on the new man, which after God is created in and true. Now watch this, watch this. Let's tie this into number one. 
And be, all right, we got the old guy. When a person gets saved, when a person gets saved, he, his body is not saved. His soul is saved. But he still has to live in the flesh this week. Remember what he told him in the garden? He said, your spirit is willing, but your flesh is. Now, we still fight it. We still struggle with the flesh. Got to deal with it every day. Every day. We got to deal with it every day. But he says, put off the flesh. Put off the old way of behaving, the old way of acting, the old way of living, the old way of thinking. And put on the new man. The new man is Christ. We put on his actions, his, his thinking. Let his mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. We put on the new man. But how, how, watch this now, stay with me. I only got a couple minutes. This is so good right here. Watch this. How do we put off the old man and put on the new man? Right here, look what it says, right in that middle verse, 23, and be renewed in the spirit of your how do we renew our mind? Where do you do meditating now? In your What do you meditate on? You getting this? I want to be better than I was yesterday. I don't want to be I don't want to be like the old man. How many y'all? How many y'all know that there's a possibility after salvation you can slip up and act like the old man? Let's just be honest. Can we just? Uh, how many y'all have acted like the old man? You let me tell you how to keep that from happening. Meditate on this word, because the way you act like the old man is you start thinking like the old man again. But the Bible says after you're saved, you need to renew your mind. What did he say? What did he say in Romans? I, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you, you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, right? Yeah. Is that what he said? You present, you putting it on the altar, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. Be not conformed, be not conformed to this world, but be ye by the what? The renewing of your mind. You say, what happens? You start, you start putting this in your mind. And you start meditating on it. You see, conformed is pressure from the outside. That's what the world does. Y'all see it on TV. They're trying to pressure you into thinking homosexuality is okay. Transgenderism, all these other things that's coming along this world is trying to force it down your throat and pressure you into thinking that shacking up's okay, premarital sex is okay. Just, just listen, uh, uh, are y'all with me? But what God said, if you'll start putting his word in, Transformation takes place. Be not conformed, but be ye transformed. The word transform is the Greek word metamorphio, which we get our word metamorphosis, right? The caterpillar into the butterfly. There's a butterfly inside that caterpillar the whole time. But the change begins to take place on the inside. How? By meditating. I guarantee you, you cannot meditate on this and it not change you. It'll change the way you think. It'll change the way you act. It'll change your behavior. You pursue it. Seek the kingdom. What does it mean to seek the kingdom? It means you seek his commands. You seek his commands. Then you seek his character. Every day of your life, you say, I want to be more like you. I want to be more like you, God. I want to be more like you, Christ. I want to think like you, Jesus. I want to act like you, Jesus. I want to love like you, Jesus. If you'll start loving like Jesus, you'll love more than just your family. You'll go to loving your enemies. You'll go to loving everybody. Then number three. Hurry, 49 seconds. Here we go. Pursuing, seeking the kingdom means you're seeking his commands. You're seeking his character. You're pursuing his, his commands, which is the word we learn. You're pursuing his character. That's the way we live. But then you're pursuing his cause. His cause. Matthew 28, 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Say that with me. And teach all nations. say it again. Teach all 
How many people are we supposed to reach? All. All right, Mark 16, 15. And he said unto them, All right, let's, let's try it. Here we go. And he said unto them, And? Okay, everybody, fair of you, let's say it all together. You ready? Go ye into all the world, preach the gospel to every That's the work. That's his cause. Acts 1, 8. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always, what? Abounding in the work of the Lord. The work of the Lord. What is the work of the Lord? Getting the gospel to every creature. That's the, that's the work of the Lord, is getting the gospel to every creature. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Now look at me, everybody, before you close up. Everybody look, everybody look. Jesus has made us a promise. Jesus has made us a promise. If we will focus on him, if we will pursue his word, his character, if we, will, if we will sell out to the cause of Christ in getting the gospel to every creature, he'll take care of our worry. If we will focus all these things shall be added unto you. You see, it's not wrong to have things. I think some of those things is he's included. I used to just think it was just the basic necessities, but I've seen God bless, you know, really good, holy, righteous people a lot. I think treasures are included in that. God will give you stuff. God will give you the desires of your heart. Listen, he's done it in my life. I've seen him do it in countless Christians. I don't know about y'all, but I've got way more than I deserve. Focus on him. Seek him. Go after it. Do everything you can to pursue his cause, getting the gospel to every creature. Now, if you're doing his work, you don't think he ain't going to fund that? And supply and provide for that? Y'all with me say amen? amen? Well, that's all we got. Two minutes, 58 seconds. Let's all stand. Let's all stand. Listen, this coming week, we're kicking off. I want y'all to be praying. Uh, got some exciting stuff in the next few weeks. I'm telling you, it's going to be great. Uh, I love talking about church planning. I love talking about mission work. I love talking about what God's doing. Uh, I learned this. I learned this. What you celebrate will be duplicated. If you don't ever talk about it, people ain't going to have a heart for it. And if there's anything I want our church to have a heart for, that's getting the gospel to every creature. Period. Missions needs to be our heartbeat because that's the heartbeat of Christ. And all God's people say it.